Welcome back to RoanAthletics.com. Ryan Barrett here and standing with the head coach of the 4-0 Rowan Pro Ops, Jay Corsi. And coach, 4-0 uh, start for the first time since 2005, and that year you won 11-2 and and made it to the semifinals. What have been the three factors, the three biggest factors that have gotten this team to 4-0 this year? Well, I think turnovers. We've created a lot of turnovers and have not turned the football over. I think that's critical. Um, penalties, I think we've done a really great job with limiting uh, penalties and mistakes. And um, I, th I think the, the third is a combination of great team defense and a very efficient offense. So I think when you have those three things, you're going to give yourself a great chance to, to win um, you know, every weekend. Going back to Saturday, playing in the mud and the rain and the wind, the one thing that we could see watching it is that Dante Pickney was about the only player on the field that wasn't muddy. That's just a big testament to that offensive line, keeping them safe back there. Yeah, and again, if you looked, uh, you know, they had two senior quarterbacks and the ball was kind of flopping all over the place with them. Dante didn't. He was cool, steady Eddie, calm and collect. Didn't have any missteps, miss snaps, miscues, drop balls. And, um, you know, I, I think he's been a big, pleasant surprise uh, for us right now up to this point point now the play that's been going around all over the nation and it's not a play that you draw up is obviously the muffed pat that turned into a, a rugby scrum pretty much and a extra, another two points for your team is that the first time you've ever seen something like that and what did you think after you you had a chance to go back and watch it again well yeah it's a very rare play that the kicker is the one that picks it up uh, very rare that the offensive team picks it up and carries it into the end zone. It's usually the opposite, which happened we saw earlier in the game. But, um, yeah, I haven't really seen that much. Um, I was shocked it was Tyler, but when you watch the film on the tight shot, he knew exactly where the ball was. He knew exactly to go get it and pick it up. He almost squeaked into the end zone untouched, mm -hmm. but then the mass of humanity just kind of gobbled him up and uh, carried him into the end zone. And it was just a heady play on his part. You know, um, Disappointed he spiked the ball at the end there to give us the 15-yard personal foul to kick off at the 20 instead of the 35. But, um, you know, he was excited. He made a great play. It was a learning moment for him. Um, but, uh, you know, again, it was a heady play on his part. And um, you have to give him a lot of credit. A lot of times it's not physically what you do. It's mentally being prepared and knowing mentally what you're supposed to do. And he knew exactly what to do. Now moving on to Salisbury this week, the last time you played them was 2012, so you're very familiar with the type of offense that they run. Uh, back in the two th 2012 game, your defense was a little bit different. How are you going to adjust to their triple option on, sa on Saturday? Well, I thought in that game in particular, the defense early on struggled because it's hard to simulate the speed and, and how they attack all the phases of the field, not only in the inside run game, on the mid perimeter, and then on the perimeter. So, you know, it's going to be an adjustment early on again, but because we did play them a couple years ago, my hope is we kind of understand a little bit of what they do and where they're going to attack us. They're a great football team. They score a lot of points. So it's a, another great challenge for us on the road. And final question is, who do you have winning the World Series in 2015? Toronto Blue Jays. All right, Coach, thank you and good luck this week.